Good morning. Let's recognize hymn number 754. Hymn number 754. Lord, send me. There is much to do. There's work on every hand. A heart to cry for help comes ringing through the land. And Jesus calls for reapers. I must act to be. What would thou, O oh Master? Here am I, send me. Oh, here am I. Oh, Lord, send me. Oh, here am I. Bidding, Lord, send me. And there's the plaintive cry of mourning souls distressed, and the sigh of hearts who seek but find no rest. And these should have my love and tender sympathy. Ready at thy bidding, Lord, am I send me? Oh, here am I. Oh, Send me, oh, here am I. I'm ready at thy bidding, Lord, send me. And there are souls who linger on the brink of woe. Lord, I must not, cannot bear to let them go. And let me go and tell them, brother, turn and leave. Master. I would say to them, here am I, send me, oh, here am I, oh, Lord, send me, oh, here am I, I'm ready at the beginning, Lord, send me, oh, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Once again, God has granted us this privilege to be together to worship him in spirit and in truth. It's good to see everyone. I heard that it's threatening rain out there, but it's a good day anyhow because God has granted us the privilege to be here. To our visitors, you're welcome. We're just glad to have you as a part of our services here at the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ, and any any time you're in the area, we'd like you to stop in and be a part of our services here. Uh, we will recognize you later in our services. Uh, to all of our members, uh, if you have a prayer request or a, a uh, response, we ask that you please fill out a response card and get that to the ushers, and then we will read it at the appropriate time. Let's together stand as we prepare our minds for worship. Give unto the Lord, give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of people, give unto the Lord, glory and strength, give unto the Lord, the glory due his name, bring an offering, and come before him, Worship the, Lord Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. In the beauty of holiness. Let us together pray. Holy and righteous God, our Father, we humbly thank you at this time for blessing us to see another Lord's day. We know, dear God, it's not because we've been so good but it's because you are a merciful and kind God and you have showered your blessings upon us. 
We thank you for this privilege of worship, where we can collectively come together and offer our praise and thanksgiving to you. We thank you for Christ. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. And it's because of him we can come into your presence today. Father, we pray and we ask that you forgive us of our sins, those things that we said, done, and thought that were contrary to your will and your way. And we pray that you'll cleanse our minds at this moment, that we might be able to worship you in a way that's pleasing and acceptable. Bless this service. May all things be done to your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This morning, let us recognize hymn number 139. Hymn number 139, the great, the great Redeemer. We'll sing verses number uh, one, numbers one and three. How I love the great Redeemer, who is doing so much for me. With what joy I tell the story of the love that makes me free until my earthly life is ended i will sing the songs above and then beside the crystal sea praising jesus and his love and he is everything to me to me he is everything shall always be. I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in his praise. Here and in the world above, my soul shall sing of saving love. Life and light and joy is he the precious friend who died for me. Glory be to him forever. In this praise is to Christ the Lamb. He has filled my life with sunshine. He has made me what I am. Oh, that everyone would know him. Oh, that all trust the love and be his forevermore. He is everything to me, to me. He is everything to me and everything shall always be. I will never cease to raise a song of gladness in his praise here and in the world above my soul shall sing of saving love life and light and joy is he the precious friend who died for me As we prepare for our scripture reading and prayer, let us recognize hymn number 302. Hymn number 302. We'll sing verses 1, 4, uh, excuse me, 1, 3, and 4. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, 
in this solid ground when firm through the fiercest drought and storm what a heights of love and what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand there in the ground his body lay and light of the world by darkness slain and then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory and sin's curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death and this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry until final breath and jesus commands my death is stunning and no power of hell and no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand until he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand until he returns or calls me home and here in the power of Christ I'll stand Scripture reading this morning will be taken from the book of James. James chapter 1 and the verses are verses 22 through 25. That's James chapter 1 verses 22 through 25. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. In verse number 22 of James chapter 1, it says... But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. And then in verse 25, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, Amen. this man shall be blessed in his deed. I've just read to you James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. May the Lord have a blessing for the readers, doers, and hearers of his word. And if you can, please stand for prayer. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Most kind and gracious Father, merciful Father, we thank you for another day that was not promised to us, Lord. Father God, we know someone didn't wake up this morning, Father, and we're thankful, Father, that we can be here in this place to give you praise. Father, help us to be leery about going through the motions when it comes to serving you. Uh, Father, we know that worship is a serious thing, Father, and help us to treat it that way whenever we come to you in any form or fashion. Father God, we just thank you once again, Father God, before asking for anything, thanking you for everything, Lord. You didn't have to wake us up. You didn't have to let us breathe. You didn't have to do anything, Father, but you took the initiative, sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins so that we can have eternal fellowship with you. 
Father God, we thank you for this leadership. We thank you for the ministerial team and their, continue, their continuance of perseverance in preaching sound doctrine and edifying the flock, Amen. Father. Father God, we pray, I pray for each and every member here, Father, that you uh, continue to build us up, encourage us, Father, and help us to always go to you because you are the source. Not anybody else, but go to you first, Father. Father God, we, uh, I pray for uh, the blessings of the minister that will come to break unto us the bread of life, Father. Uh, bless Brother Worthy in, in his preparation, and uh, pray that you just guide his speech as he preaches the word to us today. Father God, we, we all ask for strength together as a congregation, that we continue to work together, Father, and not work against each other. Father God, we ask uh, that you forgive us of all of our sins, Father God, because we know that we're not perfect, Father, but you paid the penalty for us, and we thank you so much for that. And in all these prayers, Father, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we prepare our hearts for communion, let us recognize hymn number 296. Hymn number 296. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dear and best for a world of lost sinners was slain and so I'll cherish the old rugged cross and until my true peace at last I down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a Heavenly Father, we humbly come approaching your merciful throne of grace, Father, once again, thanking you for another opportunity we have been given to commune with your Son. Father, we thank you for this bread, which is your Son's body, and this cup, which is the fruit of the vine. I pray, Father, that those who partake of have examined themselves and will do according to the Scriptures. This be our prayer in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Then he'll call me 
someday into my home far away where his glory for ever I'll share and so I'll cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged And exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. As we prepare for the speaker this morning, let, me, let us recognize hymn number 790. Hymn number 790. We ask all those who can and are able to please stand on this last selection. Hymn number 790. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 3. I'll found that a sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Yes, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all See Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Well, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold, and soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. Yes, when we all I get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. So let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Cause just one glimpse of him in glory Will the toys of life repay Yes, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be And when we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Yes, when we all get to Yes, Lord, what a day of rejoicing that will be Yes, and when we all see Jesus We'll sing and shout the victory Yes, when we all get to Rejoicing, rejoicing that will be, and when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. I want to thank Brother Moore for the beautiful, enthusiastic way in which he led our songs this morning, especially on that last one, when we all get to heaven. I, I believe you all were singing like people with an expectation, Amen. like people with a hope. And, and uh, if you're not here with an expectation and an, a hope, Amen. which hope is an earnest expectation, then uh, we, must, we must question and ask, why are you here? <laughs> God has been so good to us. And what a pleasure it is to be able to come and to worship him this day in spirit and in truth. 
We're thankful that he has, and we praise him for giving us an opportunity to praise him. We're thankful for the goodness he continues to show all of us each day. And what a pleasure it is to thank him by way of worship this morning. We want to continue to be mindful of many of our number that are sick. And of course, members who have lost loved ones, let us continue to lift one another up in prayer. And we know that the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. So let us continue to pray with and continue to pray for one another. To those of you that are visiting with us, we're genuinely thankful for your presence this morning. And we hope and pray that as a result of he being here this morning that you will be benefited by being a part of the worship services of the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. And we hope and pray that at the next opportune time you will come and be with us again. So we're just again very, very thankful for your presence. And, and if you're here this morning and you're not a member of the Lord's Church, we hope that something will be said this morning that will encourage you to do so by hearing and believing and obeying of what the Word of God has to say and then being baptized into Christ. And being baptized into Christ puts you in the church. And in the church, you will then be able to benefit by all the blessings, the spiritual blessings that God has made available and that he has made and promised to each of us that obey his will. And so again, we're just so very thankful for your presence here with us this morning. This morning, the text will come from, as was so beautifully read this morning, from James chapter 1. Uh, James chapter 1 and verse number 22. James chapter 1 and verse number 22. And we want to, again, read this just for emphasis sake. James chapter 1, beginning at verse number 22. The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I want to lift the title from verse number 25, where it says, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and the theme for the lesson this morning is looking into the perfect law of liberty. Looking into the perfect law of liberty. God from the very beginning has always been a God of law. In creation, he was a God of law. We go back and look at the Genesis record. He bought and created the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. He placed the stars in their places. The sun every day, like clockwork, comes up in the east and goes down in the west. It's all a part of God's law, and we benefit from the sunlight. We benefit from the moonlight, and men have used the stars on the ocean to navigate at night. His creation and his benefits in creation are evident. Also, when we think about the ocean, God made the commandment as a part of his law and as a part of his word. He made that the oceans would bring forth abundantly. Recently, 
uh, my wife and I and some other couples were sitting down at dinner. And I'm going to get in trouble for this illustration because my wife is in the second service this morning. But we sat down to eat, and we loved seafood, and she was eating a particular kind of seafood. And, and as she was eating, once she finished, she, she went to the waiter, and saw, came, the waiter came, and she said, can I have another one? The waiter bought it, and after that was over, she said, can I have another one? <laughs> after that was done, she asked for another one. But the point is, the reason that she could ask for another one, because God's law and the oceans bring forth abundantly. <laughs> in nature, in nature, we find God's law. We hear a lot about global warming, but God is a God that said that in Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 22, seed time, which is the spring, harvest time, which is the fall, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. And we benefit from this law. We benefit from having a season where we can plant. We, we benefit from having a season where we can harvest food. We benefit from the summer days. We benefit from winter, a uh, season of winter where we can kill off some of the pests and bugs that are out there. And day and night, we can always depend on day and night because of God's law. And these laws benefit us. God's laws have always benefited man. When man looks at and obeys God's laws, and God's laws have always been set up with the best interest of man in mind. At the time of creation, God established a law with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 16 and 17, he told them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam and Eve broke that law. One law he gave them, and they broke it. Later in history, God chose a people, the people of Israel. And God, after he bought them out of the land of Egypt, he gave them through Moses, laws. After he had bought them out of a land of bondage, he gave them laws which he would use to interact with them and for them to interact with him. And the laws that he gave them were first of all for a specific people. If you will, bring up Deuteronomy chapter five and verse number three. Deuteronomy chapter five and verse Number three, we see an illustration of this law that he made with the children of Israel. And notice the language that he said. Again, I'm making the point, it was for a specific people. He said, the Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, who are even us, who are all of us here alive this day. He made a specific covenant with a specific people. Not only was it a specific covenant for a specific people, people, but this also was a covenant that was for a specific time. When we look in Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 19, the Bible says, wherefore then serveth the law? The Bible says it was added because of transgressions. And then look at the time, he said, for a specific time. He said, till the seed, Amen. till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels at the hand or in the hand of a mediator. So we got a law that's for a specific people. And we got a law that's for a specific time. And I would say that and the scriptures will say and bear out that is also a law for a specific purpose. If we go down to verse number 24 of this same text, it says, Wherefore, 
the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But then look at what it says in verse number 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So this law for a specific people, this law for a specific time, this law for a specific purpose, the law that was received was a predecessor. It was the tutor. It was the shadow. It was the preview. It was the schoolmaster of what James would call now the perfect law of liberty. This law is the law under which we live and was ushered in by the blood of Jesus Christ. We ought to be able to think about the fact that we are truly blessed to live in this day and live under this law. And in this lesson today, I want to raise three points from the text. First of all, I want to ask the question, what does it mean to look into the perfect law of liberty? What does it mean to look into the perfect law of liberty? And then second question I want to answer, what is perfection? And what does it mean as it relates to God's law for us today? And then the third question I want to answer, what is the meaning of liberty as it relates to God's law? James, the half-brother of Jesus, was one who preached practical Christianity. The practical argument that he raises here is we should not just be hearers of the word, but we should also be doers of the word also. We don't just come here on Sunday morning for a habitual gathering of the saints where we come and hear a word from the Lord and then go our way without any efforts to make God's word central to our life and to our life being. Otherwise, as Jane points out, we can easily forget who we are. We can lose our way and we can lose our purpose. James underscores this point by saying, whoso looketh, looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And I want to ask a question, what does it mean to look? What does it mean to look into the perfect law of liberty? The look is not a casual glance. It's not a passing view. The word look as rendered here in the original language is paracupta. It means to bend down beside. It means to lean over as to peer within. You know, you brothers, when you first saw your wife, <laughs> what are you doing? I, I'm looking in two. It means to stoop down. To look, it's, it's, it's an intentional look. And I look at this perfect law of liberty, the word of God and God's commands, even the gospel message must be an intentional look. It must be a constant look. It must be a depth of appreciation and desire for understanding for what the word of God has to say, as well as a desire to readily apply it to my everyday life. I believe the psalmist put it very succinctly. In Psalm, the 119th Psalm, in verse number 97, he said, oh, how I love thy law. And he said, it is my meditation all the day long. That's how we're looking into the word of God. We don't come here and, and, and maybe have a, an occasional glance or an occasional peering into the word, what the word of God has to say. We're constantly looking, constantly seeking understanding, constantly seeking a way to better make our lives conform to what the word of God has to say. I'm looking, which he put in forth, put in a place before the foundation of the world. We are the recipients of that plan. We are individuals today. 
As God put forth the plan before the foundation of the world to bring man or to reconcile man back to God, here this morning, at this very time, we are the recipients. We are the benefactors of that plan. And it's a perfect plan. And it's a plan that brings about liberty. And we should relish in the perfection of God's law. We should relish in the liberty that comes from God's law. Well, Brother Whaley, how do you know that it's a perfect law? How could James say that it was a perfect law? First of all, we can say it's a perfect law because it was bought in place by a perfect mediator, a perfect high priest, a perfect savior. When I look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, and looking at verse number 14, the Hebrew writer shows us the perfection of Christ. He was a perfect one to come and to bring it into fruition. Look at what it says in verse number 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, he said, let us hold fast our profession. And he goes on to say, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we, yet without sin. Oh, I'm thankful this morning that we have a faithful high priest. He was the perfect high priest because he became us. He knows what I'm going through. He knows the trials that you experience. He knows the disappointment. He knows what it is to be talked about. He knows what it is to experience pain. He knows what it is to experience disappointment. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. All points tempted like as we, yet without sin. And then in verse number 16, it says, let us therefore let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. I don't come boldly because of who I am, but I come boldly because of who God is. I can come boldly because I know he knows what I'm going through. I can go to man and man may not know what I'm going through. I said this morning, sometimes, I, I, I believe that sometimes the reason that uh, many politicians are not as effective as they could be is that uh, many politicians, either one, have never experienced what the common man goes through, or number two, uh, they've forgotten what it is like to experience what the common man goes through. But I'm thankful that I have a Savior who is always mindful of what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with. He said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. And what we're looking for, he said, they, we, we, we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. So it's a, it's a perfect law because it was brought about by a perfect Savior. Then it's a, a perfect law because it brought about perfection. Look at Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And looking at verse number 7 through verse number 9. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 7 and verse number 9, the Bible said, again, it's talking about Jesus and his ability to bring about perfection and how he was perfect. The Bible said, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared though he were a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and then look at what it says in verse number nine and being made what being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation when we look at that word perfect that word perfect means to finish it means to complete it means to accomplish. He was made perfect. Don't you remember as he was hanging on the cross at the end when it was just before it was time for him to die, he said what? He said, it is finished. It was completed. It was perfected in his death. 
Not only was it perfected in his death, but in his death, he was perfect in that he was able to fully cleanse. Amen. In the Old Testament, it was a cleansing of the flesh. But in the New Testament, there is the cleansing of the conscience. There's no more remembrance of sin. He said, as he looked toward the beginning of the new covenant, he said, I will forgive their sins and I will remember them no more. This is a beauty. Of the, this is the beauty of the fact that this is a law that is perfect and it brings about liberty because I no longer, and I'll say more about this in the middle of the, in the later in the lesson, it brings about a freedom for all of us that said, I no longer have to carry the weight of sin. When I think about this further, not only was it perfect because it was bought about by a perfect high priest, but it was perfect also because the law was the completion of God's plan. The old law was not the completion. As we said just a moment ago, it was a schoolmaster. It was a tutor. It was to bring us unto Christ. But now, we are under a perfect law. It is a complete law. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 17, if you will. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 17. Jesus made the statement, he said, Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. He said, I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That word fulfill is another word in a sense for perfection. I'm here to complete God's plan. Look at the next verse. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Jesus was bringing about the completion of God's wondrous plan and the completion of God's wondrous plan was one that brought about a new covenant, a new relationship, a perfect law of liberty. But you know, in our, our theme for this quarter is united as we reason together. Now I want you to reason with me for just a moment. See, there are some folk who, who push against the old law or the new law. They don't want to admit to the fact that there is a new law and a new covenant. And they want to go back Amen. to the old law. You can go back if you want to, but it's not there. It's not there. God, in his plan, wanted to bring about a new law. And why would you want to go back to a shadow and not have the very substance? Why would you want to go back to a tutor a schoolmaster, a symbol of what was to come, when now we have the very object of God's plan. There's some that want to build their beliefs on an ethnic response or a cultural response. But you see, my response to God is not cultural. My response to God is spiritual. There's some today, I'm going to call the name Black Hebrews. 
And they want to, to build a teaching and a doctrine that's based on the fact that we Amen. are the original Amen. Hebrew. We're the original children of God. And they base their doctrine on a racial point of view. But you don't base your faith in God on a racial point of view. You don't base your faith in God on ethnicity. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 28. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 28. Paul, during his time, had to raise the same argument because there were some Jews that were resting in their ethnicity. They were resting in their heritage. And Paul had to take that belief apart. Look at what he said. And I'm going to start over in verse number 17 to, to give a context to what he was saying. In verse number 17 of Romans chapter 2, he said, Behold, thou art called a Jew and resteth in the law and makest thy boast of God. But then when we come down to verse, go to verse number 28. He makes the argument, he said, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But then look what he says in verse number 29. He said, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart of the mind in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Look what it says further. Galatians chapter 3. Paul makes his point. Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 26 and verse number 27. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 26, and verse number 27. Look what he said. For ye are all the children of God. By what? By faith in Christ Jesus. He said, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Then he goes on to break down the argument again. He said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither Bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you're all one Amen. in Christ Jesus. And then look what he says down to verse number 29. He said, and if you be Christ, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. Then are you Abraham's seed? So it's a, it's a perfect law. But not only is it a perfect law, it's a law of liberty. And as I study the text, there are three, at least three things that fit, I believe, under this, this umbrella of liberty. First of all, it's liberty from the rigors and the demands of the Old Testament law or the old law. Galatians, or Romans chapter 8 and verse number 4. Romans chapter 8 and verse number, I said 4, Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1. We'll start there. Romans chapter 8 and beginning at verse number 1. The Bible said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And then look what he says here, for the law of the spirit of life. That's this perfect law of liberty. It's the law brought in by Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. That's the old law. Then he says, for what the law 
could not do. I don't want to go back to a law that couldn't do what I needed it to do. For what the law could not do. And, and the reason it couldn't do what it need, I needed it to do, the Bible said, in that it was weak. It wasn't God's weakness. He said it was weak through the flesh. That's you and I. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. The Bible said he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. It's being made complete in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Liberty from the rigors and demands of the law. And not only that, this liberty is liberty from the weight of sin. If you will, get Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, and, and I want to start at verse number 9. And there are so many verses that we could turn to, but I'm just doing a couple of verses to, to make the point. Hebrews chapter 9 and, and verse number 9. And the Bible says, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect. There was a priest out there making sacrifices on behalf of the people and even as he year by year made those sacrifices on behalf of the people, it could never make the priest perfect. If it couldn't make the priest perfect, what do you think about you and me? Bible says in verse number 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation, until the time God was going to bring in a new law. But then in verse number 11, it says, but Christ, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Now watch, watch this. The Bible said, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Well, the priest had to go in year by year offering the blood of goats and, and calves, but, but Jesus came. He went in one time into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. But then look what it says in verse number 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Now watch this. In verse 13, there's a purifying of the flesh with the blood of bulls and goats. In verse number 14, he said, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You know, this, this is good news of the gospel. This is good news of the gospel. You see, when Jesus came and he went in once, he made it possible for perfection for you and I. It's not perfection based on my action. It's not perfection based on my goodness, but it's perfection based on the fact that the blood of Jesus cured fully, completely, cleans me from my sin. And, and I, want, I know that somebody here this morning more than likely is sitting there holding on to guilt of something that's been done sometimes a very long time ago. But you need to understand, you need to remember, you need to be reminded of the fact that there's no sin, there's no wrong that can outdistance the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. And that's why when we come here on Sunday morning, it's a time of celebration. It's a time of honoring God because I can stand before God 
cleansed and justified just as if I'd never sinned. God has been a good God. I don't have to carry around the weight of sin. Satan wants to cause you to think that you have to carry around the weight of sin, but you don't have to carry around the weight of sin. God has freed us from that. We have liberty from the weight of sin. So not only do we have liberty from the rigors and the demands of the law, not only do we have liberty from the weight of sin, we also have liberty from the fear of death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 13 and 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 13 and 14. The Bible says that again, I will put my trust in him. Oh, we need to all put our trust in him. There's nothing else that we can put our trust in but him. And again, behold, I am the children which God hath given me. To the next verse, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, as we go through this time of living in a flesh and blood state, the Bible said he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power over death or of death, that is the devil. What did you do, Jesus? I took the thing that he used for his power weapon and I destroyed it by dying Amen. on the cross. And as I died on the cross, he has no more power. Amen. You see, being in Christ, and I made this point in the first service, and, I, and I'll, I'll stand by it. Being in Christ is the only place where we truly have liberty. I believe that. Being in Christ is the only place where we have true liberty. You can have financial liberty. You can have liberty to accomplish and, and do other things. You, you may have influence that gives you some liberty, but, but being in Christ is the only place where you can have true liberty. And I'll tell you why. Because being in Christ is the only place where you can settle the question of death. The Bible says it's appointed to man once to die, and after this comes the judgment. The only way that a man's life is completely free and completely at liberty is when a man's life has resolved death. I shared with the first service this morning that my, my mother, I feel like you know her because I've talked about her enough from the pulpit here. But she's in the hospital right now. And she's in the middle of a struggle. And we don't know what's going to happen. But I know earlier this week, we had a long discussion. And even though she was weak, she probably spoke about an hour nonstop. And she was talking about death. And I was there to comfort her, but she ministered to me because she has already resolved death because she knows whom she's, she's believed in. She knows the outcome. She knows who she given her life for. And so even at a time of sickness and, and pain and all the other things about it, she's at liberty. Preach. Because she's resolved. No wonder Paul could say, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? 
When I resolve the problem of death, I'm truly at liberty. When I resolve the problem of death, nothing in this life can touch me. You know, when I think about this, and one more verse of scripture, and I'm bringing this lesson to a close. In John, John chapter 8, in verse number 31, the Bible said, then, Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which followed or believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. So we're talking about freedom here. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. But then look at their answer. They answered him and said, we be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. How says thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus had a reply for them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant Amen. of sin. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then he said, and the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. And then look at what he says in verse number 36. He said, if the son therefore shall make you free, Amen. you shall be free. Indeed, in other words, if I make you free, you're shown up free. We have the option to be free in Christ. Oh, thank God for a perfect law of liberty. Perfect because it's brought about by a perfect Savior. Perfect because this time, this law that we live under represents the perfection of God's wondrous plan. Perfect because it makes the commas there unto perfect. And thank God for liberty. Liberty from the old law. Liberty from the bondage of sin. And liberty from fear of death. Amen. God is a good God. We just got to stay and continue to be with him. And, and we have wondrous promises and wonderful things that we have that await us as we continue to live our lives for him. There might be someone here uh, this morning that is not in the Lord's body. You can become a member by hearing the word of God. I've given it to you as simply as I possibly can. Believe in the same, repenting of your sins, confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, go down to the watery grave Amen. of baptism. That puts you in contact Amen. with the blood of Jesus Christ. That puts you within the benefits of this perfect law of liberty. You're set free from any wrong that you've done, and you're now at liberty to live your life. I, I, I didn't have time to go into, uh, Matthew talked about the fact, don't lose, use your liberty as a time for the flesh. Amen. But now that we have liberty, we ought to serve one another. Yeah. God is a good God. And if you're here this morning, you are a member of the body of Christ, and maybe you've not been living your life in a way that's pleasing and acceptable to him. Don't, don't squander your liberty. Take advantage of your liberty by continuing in a relationship that is pleasing and acceptable to him. If you have a need, we ask you please come as we together stand and sing the song of encouragement. Hymn number 890. Careless, oh, why will you linger wandering from the fold of God? And hear you not the invitation, oh, prepare to meet thy God. And careless, oh, careless, oh, heed thy warning.
Confess his faith in Christ, Daniel Wright Soul. Daniel, would you come forward at this time, please? Daniel, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. This confession brought death to Christ, Daniel, but it's going to bring a new life to you. We're going to take you in a moment. You're going to go down in the watery grave of baptism. You come up a new creation in Christ. And we ask that you remain faithful, Daniel. Are you ready to follow Jesus? Yes. God bless you. God bless you. Brother Worthy, we want to say thank you for that wonderful lesson this morning. I, I, think, it, I think it may be because I'm getting older that I have more appreciation for Jesus Christ day by day. Jesus has done something for us that we just could not do for ourselves. And when you hear about what he has done, 
it just makes you boil up inside. I don't know it just I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I just get all warm inside. He's done something for us. And Brother Worthy helped us to see that perfect law of liberty. And look about you talked about looking into that law and 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 death and all that, and I'm just all ex anyway. I'm going to mess it up if I keep talking. We appreciate that lesson, Patrick, and your preparation of that lesson for us today. God bless you, brother. We have many that have turned in cards, and we're going to read their cards, and then we're going to go to God in prayer on their behalf. We have Sister Beverly Sweat. We're going to ask that you stand right where you are, Sister Beverly. And she's asking for prayer that our faith uh, continue to be strong in God and also Let's keep Brother Worthy's mother in our prayer. Walking in sunlight, yeah, yeah. all of my journey, oh, over the mountain, oh, over the mountain, through the deep end. Don't you know that Jesus has said, I, well, the Lord said, I never leave him. Oh, Lord, that's a promise, divine word. That never can fail. Oh, oh, heavenly, heavenly, y'all look like the old heavenly sunlight. Thank you for my soul, my soul with His glory and His soul divine. Oh, Lord, but you never get there in my life. Gotta keep rejoicing, gotta keep on singing His praise. With his glory, glory divine, so divine, oh, Lord. Each and every day of my life, gotta keep rejoicing, gotta keep on singing his praises. My Jesus, my Lord, hang on in the bright sun. So I'm ever rejoicing, oh, when I'm pressing my way. Home to those mansions above. Oh Lord, oh when I'm singing this praise and gladly I'm walking in sunlight. Oh I'm walking in sunlight. Oh Lord, oh Lord, heavenly yes. Y'all, there's nothing like it. I'm gonna live without it. Oh, said it's flooding my soul.
Daniel, based on your confession, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the remission of your sins. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, and that thou mightst ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? As we prepare for our offering, we'll sing the uh, second verse. My Father's house of light, my glory circle throne, I left for earthly night for one drink sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee. Hast thou left all for me? I left, I left it all for thee. Hast thou left all for me? Good afternoon. We have reached our next order of service. This is the collection. This is why we come on each and every Lord's Day to give back a portion of our wages just as God has commanded us. We can find scripture texts, how we are to do this, to give back on each and every Lord's Day, just as God has instructed us. We can find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 1 and 2. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it reads as following. Now concerning the collection for the saints as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. If we will, let us prepare our mind, go to hell and Father, and give thanks for the collections. Of our almighty, righteous Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for allowing us to be on this Lord today, giving you praise and thanks. We pray, Lord, as the funds that we raise and collect today will continue to go toward the glorifying and building of your kingdom and be used in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. These are all blessings. I pray in Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you notice on the church website, there are four, four ways to give um, your offering. But if you are physically here today, as you exit the doors, you will see the brothers with the baskets, and you can put your offering uh, in the baskets as you exit. Thank you. Once again, we'd like to say welcome to all of you who are visiting with us here at the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. We have some cards of names of those who are visiting with us. We'd like for you to stand uh, right where you are as I call your name. Uh, we have Morris Edmond. Morris Edmond? Where's Morris? Morris, welcome. Welcome, Morris. We have Ramona Jennings. Ramona Jennings from Dallas, Texas. Ramona. Amen. We have Jennifer Thompson and Dustin Johnson from Louisville, Kentucky. 
in there. Air up in the back. All right. We have Anthony Garcia. Anthony, where are you? Anthony? Welcome, Anthony. We have Dylan Herring. Dylan Herring. Hey, Dylan. Welcome. And he's from the Southside Church of Christ in Colleen, Texas. That's right. And then we have uh, Cassandra Kirby from Compton, California. Amen. <laughs> in California, folk wave at you, don't they? All of who are visiting with us, would you please stand right where you are? All who are visiting with us today. Amen. Thank you again for being with us at the Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. Any and every time you're in the area, you're welcome to, to any and all of our services. We have a couple of cards that were handed in. One is from our sister Josephine Eccles on the passing of her brother. We're going to put this in the bulletin. She is thanking the congregation for all of your kindness during the passing of her brother. Also, we have a card uh, from Brother Anthony Autry. Anthony had hip replacement surgery, and he and Peggy are saying, thank you for your prayers. Anthony is doing well. We're going to keep him in our prayers. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, we want to encourage you to look at the Gazette online, if you can. Uh, there's a lot of things going to be happening in the month of September, and they're kind of early to announce, but look on the online on the cassette. A lot of the activities that are coming, and we'll be announcing those in the weeks to come. But we want to encourage our parents that we have a college and career readiness workshop that is planned for Saturday, September 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's going to be here at Greenville Avenue for 6th graders through 12th graders. They're going to help you with FAFSA forms. Y'all know that's how you get money. <laughs> with FAFSA forms, uh, they're going to help you with writing college essays for scholarships and grants. They're going to give you information about how to use AP dual credits. They're going to give you information on how to pick the right college. And then, and the other stuff, there's a lot of other things they're going to give you information on. And then there's also going to be two uh, $500 scholarships offered to seniors. If you're a senior this year, you have an opportunity for a $500 scholarship. So that is Saturday, September 17th. Parents, please mark your calendars for that event. We mentioned that the ladies workshop, you need to mark your calendar for that on October the 1st, an empowering event for our sisters. Uh, please, there'll be more information coming regarding that. This quarter, we're gonna start new Sunday school classes. We have one more lesson in the book of James and new books will be available for you from your teacher in your class as we begin our next study for the next quarter. Now we're gonna, oh, is he ready? Is Daniel ready? All right, Daniel. This way, Daniel. Brothers and sisters, this is Daniel Reitzel, our new brother in Christ. And we're going to encourage Daniel. And we're going to help him as he grows in Christ and becomes everything that the Lord wants him to be. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you, Daniel, for the decision you made. You can go back over there. And we thank Daddy, too. We're going to have our closing song in prayer. Number 331. 331. My precious Savior suffered pain and agony. He bore it all that I might live. I broke the bonds of sin and set the captive free. He bore it all that I might in his presence live. He bore it all that I might see his shining face. Freely bore it all. I with him I live, I stood condemned to die. 
Jesus took my place. He bore it all that I might in his presence live. Let's go to God in prayer. Great God of heaven and master of the universe and creator of everything that we see, from the ones who've caused the walls of Jericho to tumble down, to the one who allowed his only son to be lifted up on the cross for the sins of humanity so that all of us would have a chance, a chance to have eternal life, provided that we're obedient to the pattern that he left for us to follow. Father, we thank you so much for young Daniel this morning as he's obeyed the gospel of your dear son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be an influence on him as he's young. Help us to wrap our loving arms around him and guide him. Help him to have a village of the family of Christ to help him in his Christian walk. Father, we ask a special blessing this morning upon the mother of Patrick Worthy. Father, we ask that you comfort her, that you keep her, that you bless her, and that you allow her back to 100% health. We thank you so much for the message that you delivered us through your servant, Patrick Worthy, on your perfect law of liberty. Help us to understand what it means to look into that law and execute the things that you've commanded us to do. And Father, we ask you to bless all three ministers that you have installed here at Greenville Avenue Church of Christ. We pray that you bless their families. We pray that you bless them financially. We pray that you bless them psychologically, emotionally, in every single way that you can bless them. As they preach the gospel, we ask that you help them to stand boldly, even in the face of opposition. And finally, Father, with all the members here, we ask that everyone that's under the sign of my voice, that you bless them. We ask that you protect us, Father, as we understand that we live in a, in a world that has lost its way. But help us to be that light, Father, that men may see our good works to your glory, your honor, and your praise. And when we've gone the last mile of our journey and there's no further we can go, we just ask for a peaceful, happy hour in death, that when we open our eyes, we're in paradise, knowing where we'll spend eternity. These blessings and all blessings we do ask in the name of the one that sits on the right hand of his Father, in the name of the one that controls the universe, in the name of Jesus Christ, we do solemnly pray. Amen.